Hi dudes, what is up? Matthew Pickering here and we are going to have another GHC debugging session today. And what are we debugging today? Haskell IDE engine. And specifically, we want to know why it leaks so much space. So, it's got quite a lot of space leaks, I'm sure you're already aware, so let's get straight into it. Right, so earlier today at 2.37 p.m. I did this space, this heat profile of Haskell IE engine to try and work out why it was leaking so much space. Um, as you can see, each of these vertical lines is when a module will save. So as you keep saving the module, it uses more and more and more memory. Um, so we want to try and work out what's, go what's going on there. Um, so if you look at the line chart view, that's probably the best one to see. Um, what this, this view says is, so these lines, each one is a percentage of the maximum memory that this type uses during the whole compilation. So the ones which are leaking are the ones which go up through the execution of, of the program. The ones which are just 100% the whole time, we don't really care about those, but we care about those and we want to try and try and get rid of some of them. Um, unfortunately, um, it's not very really clear where these come from. So we've got fast string, we've got map, we've got int map, like all these ones are going up somewhat, but they're not really correlated with the events and um, I've got no, really no idea where, where they come from. So um, from this information though, I'm a bit stuck. All we know is that we've got a problem. Um, so anyway, I recorded the, that debugging session. Um, that was, I was just uh, messing around, like normally editing a project and Haskell ID Engine allows you to save, to record a session and then replay it later. So you can replay the session in order to recreate, recreate the space leak. Um, so because we, you can do that, in this test executable, we can use the replay session function that LSP test defines um, in order to replay the session um, of editing LSP test itself. Um, so this is the main executable we're going to use in order to find the space leak in, in the program. Um, so um, when you run this executable, it just runs the, runs the session. So down here, that's, that's where we're going to be running, running the executable. Okay, so that will that starts the session and loads all the modules and all that sort of stuff. Um, we want to um, have some kind of good way of finding where these leaks actually are, right? And the theory about where all these spaces come from in Haskell ID Engine is in the cache. And when you save a module, um, it caches a bunch of information, like what the parse module is, the type of module, um, and a bunch of other data. Um, and when you save a module, all this information becomes out of date, so you want to be able to you want to get rid of it. Um, but Haskell ID Engine leaks space because um, this information is retained after the module is saved, um, when it should be garbage collected immediately. So we're going to try and um, work out why this stuff is being retained after after a save. Um, so yeah, the URI cache is the thing where we're we're going to target target today. And that kind of makes sense because type gen modules have fast strings in, parse modules also do, and you know, this is this is the working theory anyway. Let's try and eliminate all the space leaks caused by the leaking of the cache. Um, yeah, the problem is though that these retainer leaks are pretty hard to, um, to find usually because you can introduce them really easily in your program without doing anything. Um, particularly uh, if 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 you just don't, don't evaluate something enough, then you can easily retain a reference to one of these fields and then it just exists for the rest of your program. So um, we're gonna need some more advanced techniques. Um, and that advanced technique is the die pack library. So what's the die pack library? It's over here, it's not yet released, but it's quite a simple interface, so we can see what, what's going on there. Um, the main idea is that we're going to um, die the cache um, and what that means is we're going to make weak pointers to each of the fields in the cache. And this generic function will um, go through all the fields in the, in the, in the record and make a weak pointer to each, each field. Um, what's a weak pointer, you say? Well, a weak pointer is a pointer which does not count as a root for the garbage collector. So what you can do with a weak pointer is you can ask the question whether something has already been garbage collected or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to make these weak pointers to all the all the things in the cache and when um, we think it should be garbage selected which is specifically when uh, the module is deleted from the this information is deleted from the cache we check all the weak pointers and check to see whether um, they're still pointing to something or not if they're not pointing to anything then it's been garbage selected and it's all okay so yeah that's what the die function does die will create the 
the weak point is two other things in the um, in the cache. Um, on the other hand, check dies is how you consume dies. Um, this type that you use using die, um, and that does the check to see if um, any of the weak points are retained. Uh, it, does, it does stuff like the garbage collection before checking and things like that. And if, if one of them has not been retained, then this continuation is called on the offending, offending data type, so you can um, print it out or do a stuff uh, with that. Right, so where do we use that? Now, that's the next question. So in the module cache um, module, funnily enough, we have the um, this one's called make leakable. So make leakable is what is going to is what is going to um, call die and create all the weak pointers to to everything. Um, so that happens when the the cache item is first created. So along with all the cache data, we also store all these all these weak pointers. And then in the delete uh, delete module, is it called? Or delete cached? Yeah, delete cached module. So delete cached module is one of them. After we've modified the cache to delete the cached item, then we check to see if everything's been garbage collected. Um, and likewise, in the um, in the modify in the cache module functions, the cache module will replace. Um, a module if it's, if it's already in the cache. So we likewise will call the uh, check space leaks function, which which calls check died in order to check whether we have any uh, weak pointers left. Right. Okay. So so far so good. So let's. So I've set I've set all this up already. So if I run the delete test, then it loads uh, LSP test in. Okay. It's loading all ten modules, and then quite quickly we get this error. So it says, okay, when we were trying to reload the compact module, we found a space leak, and this thing that was leaking was cached PS mod. So, if we recall from the cache earlier, um, it stored a, uh, a parse module. So we know that there's something that's retaining reference to the parse module when it should already be garbage collected. Uh, okay, great. Um, now I just need to find out where this is. And uh, there's a clue in the output here about how we're going to do that because there's these addresses pointed out, and these addresses are this address is the address of the parse module which is being retained. So all we need to do now is work out how it is being retained. And this handy tool called GDB which allows us to do this. So now what we're going to do is attach GDB to the Haskell process um, in order to work out why it's being retained. Okay, so I start that process and then in this other window here I'm going to start GDB. Okay, so that will just attach to the process and make it a little bit bigger. Drag, 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 drag. Okay, so now it's attached to the to attach to the process. Okay, so now this when you attach GDB to a to a process, it pauses the process. So the, the process on the left is paused. So it's had to continue to continue, and now it's it's loading. Okay. Right, so we have the have the space leak again, control C and G B, and now we take the address here, copy that, and P oh no 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 not not create people like that. Okay, copy this address here. Copy, copy, copy. And use a P4 macro to seal that address. Okay, it's not actually that address, it's actually this address. I'm not sure why, but that's probably my program. We'll solve that later. Right, people that address, and now we see that this address points to a parse module con info. Okay, great. So that's that's the problem. Um, yeah. So now um, now we still need to find the retainers. So how do you find the retainers in the GHC RTS? There's a function called find pointer. The find pointer takes an address, which we're going to pass in the address to the um, to the parse module, and it tells you what why it's retained. Perfect. So we call that function. Um, what's going on here? Ah, okay. So I messed this up here. Restart. Restart. Bracket control C there. Quit. Restart. Restart. Come on, attach. GDB. Attach. Okay. 
I won't mess this up again. I'm very experienced in using these uh, these high level debugging tools. Okay, control C here, copy this one. Key for this address, okay, back to this address, obviously, because I don't know. It's okay, we're in here, so copy this address, right, key, find pointer. So, okay, so this is gonna, now going to print things in the left window over here because um, the find pointer is a function in Haskell RTS. So it prints things to send it out, send, send it over here. Right, so now that we can see the four retainers for the pass module. Okay, these four are weak pointers, right? That's all right. They are not roots. The one which is a root is this type jet module here. So the pass module is retained because it's, retained, it's contained in, in this type jet module. Okay, that doesn't tell us very much. We need to keep going. We need to go deeper. Right, find pointer zero. Okay, let's keep going, let's keep going. Right, right, okay. So now, now it's in a list or it's in the judge, it's in one of these two, right? Let's 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 try this one. You know, maybe this one work. Right, let's keep going, let's keep going. Um, so with find pointer, there is actually a mode which will recursively follow the pointers, but it's uh, not the most it's not the most well tested function. So I wouldn't advise uh, using it because it can just make your process um, going into doing the loop as GHC tries to traverse your entire memory. Um, so we're doing this way. So right, so we now we've discovered that it's retained within a write constructor, which contains a tuple, which then contains a type module and then contains a um, a pass module. Right. Okay. So far, so so far we've we've learned nothing because I, I I've got no idea why why this stuff is like this. Even though I know how to fix problems because I've already worked out how to fix it. So anyway, yeah, we just keep going like this. Um, you know, copying the addresses into here, um, hoping that it's not right. The T var is a good clue because the T var um, means that with some somewhere we're storing this this stuff here in in a mute T var. Pretty good clue. And um, we'll keep going, and eventually we will reach something which right. The function closures sometimes good because you can use um, the dwarf information to find all the R, but this time it's useless. Because a function closure actually corresponds to an IO action in this case, which uh, is not obvious from this, but you now know because within the async that it's a, it's a function. Okay, copy that one. Okay, right, we're getting close now. So now we probably could work out what was going on because there's actually only one place in the program in task ID engine which uses async, but I didn't think of that at the time. I just kept going further and further, deeper and well, higher and higher up the um, retainer tree. So if, if any of these things were, if any of these these things were not retained anymore, then the path module would be garbage collected. So you just have to work out how to stop it being being retained, really. Um, okay, so now we know it's in a map because it's in a map somewhere. So if it's in a map, then you probably know that it's one way to stop it being retained would be to remove it from the map, right? So okay, so it's in the map again. That means it's just two levels deep in the map. Um, right, so now which map is it in exactly? Could probably work it out from this this information, but now we can really work it out. Right. So now um, this is this is the first major clue: progress data. Okay, so there's a map which contains our your actions, um, which allow you to look. So when you um, when you load modules in the bottom of Haskell ID engine, it shows you like a status indicator, so it tells you how how much how many modules you've loaded, and these and you can cancel these by by calling um, an IO action, which sends a request to cancel cancel the thing. Okay, so these are all stored in the map. Um, so it seems like we're leaking past modules because we're storing these um, these part these progress cancellation actions in a map, and they're not deleting them. Um, so we can go slightly like one more level. This is the last the last level the last circle we will enter, we see that this progress data is, is in, the, in the language context data. And the language context data is like one of the global well, the main data structures. So if we go any higher than this, we won't really um, learn anything. Like we can't really eliminate, we can't eliminate this, we can't delete this retainer, we can't delete the progress map. What we have to do is we have to um, remove the progress data from the map 
so they can be diocleted. Because um, that will cut off the um, retainer here, and then it can be free to GC all these all these closures. Um, okay. Now this took me a while to think out. It requires quite a bit of um, domain knowledge. But if we look at um, we go over to yeah, I think I think language context data is defined in this one. Um, let's let's use some advanced search. Uh, where are we? Probably in here. Okay, there we go. Right, so language context data contains all like all of the um, like global information that has card engine needs. One of them is this progress data field, which apparently I added and apparently incorrectly. Um, progress data contains the next progress um, identifier and also this map, which is the one which contains the error actions that we were talking about before, which correspond to these functions here um, from a identifier for the progress bar to an action which can be used to cancel it. Right, so how how the leak happens, so when we're loading a module, we need to keep the progress identifier, progress cancellation in the map in case we want to cancel it. But once the um, progress bar is finished, we can get rid of the um, progress monitor, progress cancellation action from the map because the progress bar is finished, so cancelling it won't do anything. Um, and the theory is that that will stop this uh, this particular particular space leak. Right. So, where is this defined? Um, so let's 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 find where this is. I think it's in the same module. Um, what's it called? Um, I think it's called save progress. So save progress. No, not save progress. Hmm. Let's search for progress. Progress data, okay, 16 occurrences. That sounds promising. Okay, store progress. So store progress is the one which um, inserts the um, cancellation action into the map. Okay, and this is why it's retaining the past module here. Um, so in order to stop it being retained, we have to delete it from the map once we finish with it. Right, so I've already implemented this um, in order to test it works. So the delete progress function um, is just like start store progress, but it deletes the, the action rather than storing it. Um, and now, when the progress um, monitor is done, you send the, the notification to say it's done. But at that point, there's no way we're going to cancel it. So at that point, also delete the cancellation action from the map. Okay. So um, save that module, and now let's see if. Um, that fixes our leak. Um, I think it might. Right, so I've saved the module and now I'm going to call new build all close GDB. Done with you for now, GDB. Um, sit back and uh, watch it compile all the, all the modules. So, yeah. While we're doing this, I mean, Visual Studio Code, I'm really impressed with it, and I've been really enjoying the remote Visual Studio Code extension that they, they offer as well, because um, I'm currently really connected to my office computer, but I can just use the IDE like, like, like normal. Um, all these terminals are SSH sessions, all these files are on, connected through SSH as well, and you can also do things like um, forward... Oh, like forward ports and stuff, which is more convenient than just doing it, going through SSH yourself and just setting up port forwarding can be annoying. Right, that side over. Let's run the leak test and see what is going on. Um, okay, so it starts again, loading LSP test um, and loads the modules. And okay, great. So we still have an error, but now the leak is something different. So um, yeah, we'd have to find out why, what, what's causing that leak, and uh, but I'm afraid that is a challenge for another day. So, like, comment, subscribe, and any questions, just stick them in the comments below. See you next time.